Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to create this nice seating chart that you can use for all sorts of record keeping. When I was teaching math class, I used this all the time. What I have here is a spot for the student's first name and last name, and then for each student there are 15 empty squares. And those 15 empty squares I would use for all sorts of record keeping. Things like field trip permission slips, um, grades, homework grades, classroom behavior, attendance, really the possibilities are endless. I also, on the second page, have a legend. So what you do is you put in next to box one, maybe this is the field trip permission slip, and then your seating chart is on a clipboard. You carry this around and in box number one, whenever Darren turns in his permission slip, I put a check mark. Or maybe box two is, you know, some homework assignment from the book that they had to answer a few questions. You walk around if they did it. This is for things that I would keep track of just for completion. I would put a check mark or maybe mark down five out of five or 10 out of 10 in the little box. It was just a very easy, simple way to do some record keeping. So this was created in Excel. So let me switch over to the Excel view so you can see what that looks like. So as you can see, what I've done is I've taken the Excel spreadsheet and I've made each of the cells rather small into um, a little tiny rectangle. And then I've merged and centered and, and put borders around them so that it looks like a seating chart. And when I print it, it comes out like this. So I, like I said, I print this and carry it on a clipboard or in a notebook. Okay, so let's begin. I wanted to show you every step of how I made this so that if your classroom doesn't have 30 chairs in nice, neat rows and columns, you can make the needed adjustments to put the chairs wherever they belong in your room to match your configuration. Or even maybe you're in a science room uh, where you have larger tables, you could connect these together and make this one big table, or maybe you have uh, chairs put together into a set of four, you could eliminate the space in between these and have these uh, right up against each other. So I'll hopefully show you all the skills that you need to know to make the adjustments to fit your classroom. Okay, let's begin with a new blank Excel spreadsheet. So when I open it up, as you can see, the cells are rather large. I need to make some adjustments. The first thing I will do is turn this landscape. So under page lay layout, orientation, go to landscape. That turns my paper sideways. You can now see the edge of the paper here, this little dotted line between column M and N. And then the bottom of the paper is between row 34 and 35. That gives me my space to work in for page one. And then my legend will go over here on page two. I first want to make these cells much smaller. Clicking this box in the top left corner highlights the entire workbook. And then right clicking at the top of a column allows you to change the column width. And since I have everything highlighted, it will do them all at one time. I've, through trial and error, I've come up with three as a good number to fit 30 chairs on the one page. If you have more or less, you can adjust that, and that will make these nice little squares. I also like to make the row height a little bit smaller. So I, again, highlighted everything, right-clicked over here along the edge, choose row height, and 12 is the magic number I came up with for that. Okay, so now I have my squares, and I need to make some changes here. I'll skip the first one, two, three rows, and I'm going to begin in row four with my seating chart, and I will skip this first column and start right here in cell B4. So let's begin by making a spot for the first name. I'm making mine go five across. So I highlight those five, then on the home ribbon, choose merge and center. And as you can see that join them together and it put when I type, it will be in the center, so merge in the center. Do the same thing in row five. So these five boxes, I'll merge in center. That'll be the last name. These next five, and then go, so I'm, I'm clicking in B6, dragging across five, and then down three rows. There are my 15 record keeping spots. 
I don't want to merge them. What I want to do with them is put a border. So I'm using this border tool and I want borders around all of those boxes. So there are my 15 record keeping boxes, first name and last name. And let's put a border around this whole seat. So you can start by clicking up here, dragging down and over, or you can click down in the bottom right, drag to the left and up, get those that seat highlighted. Again, back to the border button. This time we will choose a thick outside border and I now have the first chair in my class. I want to copy this and have basically make 30 copies of it. What we'll do is starting highlighting the bottom and going up, I will press Control C or you can right click if you like and choose copy and then leave a empty row, or excuse me, an empty column and go to H4 and you can either right click and paste or you can just press Control V. Now I'm in N4 and then I see is it remembers what you copied so I just need to paste it. Okay, so I have my back row now. Now instead of doing that 30 times, I can highlight this whole row of chairs and copy that, skip a blank row, paste the whole row. And quickly I have 5, 10, and 15, and 20, and 25, and 30 chairs. So in a matter of just a few minutes, I'm almost done here. I just want a uh, place at the top here for the class name. So I'm highlighting above the center seat, these 10 cells, merging them. So this will be the class name. I now have a spot for first names and last names below it. And I have my 15 boxes for record keeping. So what I would probably do is leave this, I'll leave this all blank. I actually um, might want to put a thick border around class name. So I just hit that border button, puts a border around there. And this, what I'm creating here is a template that I can then copy over and over again for each of my classes. All right, so that's done. Now I just need over here on this side, my legend. So copy one of your chairs and over here near the top, leave yourself a little bit so you can see the dash dotted line in between the pages. So I'm over here on the second page and I'm pasting that chair. And again, the what I'm looking for is, now is I'm creating this page. So I want these 15 boxes here to type in, you know, maybe number one, it, I could type or write. That's why I made these a little wider like this. See how this is really comprised of two rows that I merged together. That gives me, if I'm writing, I have a little more room. So let's go back to the one we're working on and let's merge these two together first. And then let's merge a space to write in or type in either one. And I now want to put a border around the outside of that. So I'm choosing this thick outside border. And I'm also going to choose all borders inside. And that gives me my first spot of my legend. Copying those. And I'm just going to paste them down the page. 15 copies of this. By the way, a nice way to navigate, um, it's, it's a lot to like click and move your mouse and click and move, move your mouse. So a nice way to navigate is just use your arrow keys on your keyboard. So I'm just pressing the down arrow and that puts me in the cell I want to be in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so there are my 15 and I can number them. And I'm just using the arrow key to do this real fast. And I will number these up here as well. So I'm numbering in the chart. And done. So there I have my template all created. I'll do a file, save as, 
uh, select a folder in your OneDrive and I suggest you call this CD chart template and I might put in a uh, 30 seats because I you know I make these for people I've made these for people 25 seats 30 seats but I'd like to you know this way you can you can create the one that works for you using the skills that I've showed you here so I have that now and now every time I'm ready to make a seating chart. I can come back to that template. I can type in my names. And then hit print. And I'll save this too. So I'll do a file. This time I'll do a save as. Oops. Hit the wrong button there. Do a save as and choose my location. And I would rename it. Um, whatever class period this is, period one, period two, whatever. You can put the name up here as well. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'll have, be happy to help you customize this to fit your classroom. And hopefully you find this to be a helpful record-keeping tool. Have a great day.